Patrick says he's ready to go tomorrow. Your thoughts on I, mean, I, I, gotta, I gotta think about it for a while. All right, he's playing. <laughs> what do you think is a perfect scenario for him right leading into, into the playoffs? Well, he's, he's healthy. He's ready to go. So, you know, uh, obviously he's definitely going to play tomorrow. Um, and we'll go from there. That's really what it goes down to. Uh, he's, much, he's looked really good in practice. Sorry. Uh, how much does Thursday's decision, is how much is it based on if you've clinched uh, before that? Do you want to leave guys at home? Do you want to make sure that if Thatcher plays, there's a full group in front of him? Like, how do you well, there's that? so many scenarios right now, like, spinning in my head. Like, honestly, we're just honestly worried about t- tomorrow. And then we'll, we'll, we'll deal from then. Um, that's the way you got to look at it because, you know, who does this, what, you know, there's a lot of what ifs, right? So, but, uh, you know, Thatch will be in tomorrow. And it's, a, it's a big game for us. That's the way we approach it. Is it hard? Uh, you know, this yeah. group has got to be anxious to get into playoffs. And um, the, the division's all but clinched. How hard is it to stay focused for the next two? You know what? It's, um, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I think some guys, I've talked to some guys, they like, oh, you know, they just, they want the playoffs to start. So, but this is all part of maturity and, 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 you know, you got to deal with these things, and it's a business-like game for us tomorrow. That's the way you got to approach it, and um, you know, you got to continue with the good habits. That's you, really what you got to. You know, that's really what it comes down to. You've called Dempro a rock, yeah, and you profess not to know a lot about the position because that's not your job. But you've played with some big goalies. You played with Textall. You played with Barrasso. Yeah. Do you see some similarities in the way that Demko just owns the cage, and if he sees it? He's probably going to stop. Yeah, just the t- his temperament. Like the big time goal is you can just tell, you know, when there's pressure hits you, they're not flipping and flopping. They're not diving all over. They're, they're, they, j- they continue with their style. You know, like Demmer's a big goalie. He's, um, he just looks big in the net. doesn't matter if the team's all over us or if they're not. They're not. He stays in his, who he is. That's why, I lo- you know, that's why I love him is that he is who he is at, um, during any part of the game. Um, if, that, if that answers your question. Goaltending is everything during the season, correct? But in the, in the playoffs, it's, it's everything. Do you think you got uh, added an advantage? <clears throat> well, I mean, listen, going into the year, I knew what I had. I mean, you know, part of your system is de- de- designed a little bit with your goaltending, too, right? Um, so when you have a, a, you know, a rock like that, you, you make sure that you, you have some good foundation around them. That's the way you got to look at it. Jim and Patrick did a great job in the offseason and during the season to, to really bolster your blue line. Size matters in the playoffs. Do you like what you could put out there for, for your three pairings and what makes them effective, especially when the game changes in the playoffs? Well, I think, you know, you, when you play a team, you know, seven times, it could be seven times, whatever, um, you're going against the same guys. Uh, it's a little bit of war attrition. You know, it's heavy for you. I know, you know, guys that usually don't hit, Usually hit now. I mean, everybody starts to play a little more uncomfortable. So bigger D, you know, protecting the guts of the ice. Um, you know, it, it helps having those type of guys. Um, so, you know, we have a we have a bunch of those guys. So that's it, it's it, it, we'll see if it works. But uh, I believe the way we play, defended this year with those big guys is going to help us in the in the playoffs. Rick Quinn mentioned that not only some of these new pieces added were great on the ice, but the character and the way that they fit in with the group. How important is how tight this group is in your experience going forward into the playoffs? How meaningful is that? Yeah, and Huggy's right. It's um, in the dressing room. They're selfless guys. You know, they're not. They're very unselfish guys. You know, the guys that we acquired. Um, they don't really think of stats. They they want to win. And um, even when we had some hectic times this year. Those guys have been really steady, uh, you know, kind of low-maintenance guys for me to coach. You know, those guys are, they don't complain. Um, you know, if they, if they don't get enough ice time, I'm, they're not knocking on my door. They're just, they're just low-maintenance guys. That's why we acquired them. Further to Kay's question and, and, and to, uh, getting on to Ben's as well regarding Thatcher, chatting with the guys in the room, they have so much respect for the way that he's come back and yet another injury. Aside from what he's going to do in the net for you because he's so skilled, just having him back and the way that he's worked, giving the lift to the team? Yeah, I think that's a huge part. Um, since he's been out, you know, he's at the rink twice a day. Um, he's by himself sometimes with a therapist. He's here at 7 a.m. He's here at 7 o'clock, like yeah, 7 p.m. He's worked really hard to get to this position and, you know, um, like really hard. He's probably accelerated the, 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 the process because he worked so hard. I think that's contagious. And it just shows other players, you know, the dedication and how bad he wanted to come back and help this team. Kirk, there's a lot. 
Elias Lindholm's been here for 24 games now. For you guys and your coaching staff, how different is it from game one that he played to this point in the season, how you guys can figure out the best way to utilize him? Well, I think last game, I thought his, you know, his game was really good. I thought he was one of our better players. Um, you know, it's hard to explain right now in a, in a media scrum, but there's certain decision-making. I watch what he does where some other, you know, I'm not saying our team, but some, some lower IQ players would dive in or do something different. He does a subtle thing. I'm like, wow, he, that was a good play. It doesn't, might not notice to the public, but I notice those things where it, it slows down the other team's option to get to, you know, whatever the play is. And I think that's what he did last game for us. Uh, I know there's like three or four times crucial situations where, you know, he didn't dive in and because, and one of our other players dove in and he backed the guy up. I think that's huge, especially in the playoffs because, you know, goals are critical, right? You know, a, a, a bad read could be critical in a game. You talk about your different third line combinations, Rick, and, and having yeah. him in the middle with uh, Joshua and, yeah. and, and uh, Garland. Yeah. Um, I know I know McDavid didn't play Saturday, but uh, Dreisaitl really didn't get a lot when they were up matched up against that line. Again, yeah, I like that, that line. I, I, I like that line. I like, you know, it was something in my head a couple weeks ago, mm-hmm. even though Lindy was out. I, I just think it falls and it just, it's a, it's, you know, I just think it's a good matchup line for me. Not, not so much even hard matchups, but just, it just slots us well. You know, I think we won that way this year with, with our depth and uh, playing more four line than loading up. That's what I believe. When you talk about his reads, is it the way he angles people off? Lindy, or what, what does he do exceptionally well? Right? Well, I think obviously, you know, listen, he won those, uh, I mean, Drysdale is one of the best faceoff guys. He won, th- I think he won three in a row there. I mean, that's, hard, that's hard to do, you know? Uh, so you take the draws out of it. Um, yeah, just more of a knowing when to to leave the middle of the ice to, to confront somebody or whether, hey, I better stay in the middle of the ice and give the guy some time because uh, somebody made a wrong read. I think that's where he's really gifted. Rick, last week you had said that you might consider the idea of keeping Silovs around and three goalies. Yeah. He's up on an emergency recall. Yeah. There's got to be some sort of transaction here. Does the organization have to balance it, though, with the idea that he could play playoff hockey in the American Hockey League? Yeah, I don't know how that works. Uh, that's above my pay grade, but that's a good question. I, uh, you know, you do like to have three goalies, especially uh, during the playoffs, for practice time, too, because of the starter. You don't want him in the net a lot during practice. So uh, that's a question i got to talk to Patrick, and we'll, we'll go through all that stuff. Yeah, good well, question, though. Can I ask you about um, Hoaglander and, and how you've seen his, his play of late, just as a – you know, an option with PD. Do you think he's as active as maybe as he was a couple of weeks ago? Yeah, I, I think Hoggy, um, you know, I think th- this is a new territory for Hoggy because I've played him higher in the lineup the last, you know, was it six, two months, whatever it is. And I think sometimes Hoggy's got to, you know, I know when he plays a simple game that's his best. Um, I still love his motor. I still think there's some really, there's some great stuff. I mean, he's had a hell of a year for us. Um, but now there's uncharted waters. Like he's playing in a higher role, and sometimes he's got to be careful that he doesn't try to play like he's a top six. I, I hate to say it that way. He's just got to be hoggy. If, he, if he's hoggy, that's what he's good. But if he tries to be something he's not, he gets in trouble. He starts losing his man. You know, he um, he changes on the wrong time. Little things like that. Uh, I've seen a little bit, but they're correctable. And he's done a hell of a job for us. Rick, with the combination of Joshua and Garland, you've had them together all yeah. season long. Your confidence surely is building throughout the season. And then what's it at right now? And what are you seeing from them at this point in the season that was maybe different than at the halfway point? Well, their body of work. I mean, I'd be crazy to ever split those guys up. I mean, they've, they've been terrific for us. You know, if, you know, those you know, whoever you play them with, they've usually, you know, tilted the ice or, or at least been neutral. Like, you know, very rarely they're on the, the – uh, on the bad video, right? Because uh, they, they're they're very good chemistry-wise. So um, now you have a, a really good hockey player, Lindholm, playing with them. So it, it's uh, I think they'll feed off that. Is it so much about chemistry? Is it the style of play they both have? Because it's a different style those two play. Like what makes the chemistry work so well for them? Well, Gars likes to hold on to pucks a lot, right? He's he's good in the corners, um, and Dakota knows that. So Dakota can position himself or, or play off that. Maybe some other players that want the puck a lot more have a tough time playing with guards, I guess. I don't know. But I have to give Dakota a lot of credit because, uh, and, you know, Dakota, I don't know how many assists Garley's got on Dakota's goals, but Dakota, I think Garley said Dakota owes him dinner for his <laughs> next contract because he has given him some good, some tap-ins this year. So, um, yeah, they've done, they've done well. 
As we enter the final week here, how do you as a coach kind of keep the players motivated when there might be some that are focused on the playoffs, if, especially if you clinch yeah. uh, tonight? Yeah, I think you keep, uh, and I see, you know, you guys know I say it all the time, but day to day stuff, very short points in the meetings. Um, don't give them a lot of stuff every day. Um, and, you know, get them to the rink and have them here a couple hours and get them out. I, you know, I think if, if you give long meetings, you start talking about the playoffs and, you know, what ifs. I think that's when people get antsy. So we're trying to be more direct and shorter stuff and get guys out of here so they can get home. Um, you know, don't get me wrong. You come to the rink, you, you work, you work hard, but then you try to get home with your family and, and kind of unplug yourself till the intensity starts. And kind of around the league, we've already started seeing some coaches uh, sitting players or talking about sitting players. How does that conversation happen with competitors like Hughes, uh, PD, or Miller, where you say, you know, tonight for uh, we're going to give you a little bit of a rest? Yeah, I, I haven't even thought of that stuff. You know, um, you know, whenever the game's over tomorrow. We'll probably talk about that stuff, but uh, sorry, but uh, that that's not something we're really. F I'm like I'm not really focused on that stuff yet. Rick, one final thought though, and the fact that you know there's going to be a lot of guys playing their first playoff game yeah. here uh, next week. There's a few people who got to play in the bubble, not the same experience. Channeling that excitement, when will you allow them to really think about it and enjoy it before they go about doing their business? Well, I think you got to enjoy what you've accomplished. You know. Um, Hundred percent, and everybody's different. Uh, the only the only thing the only advice I give them players is, whatever you've done so far, be normal. Like do the same thing. Don't don't, you know. I'm not going to bore you. I have a good story that I learned for myself playing in the Stanley Cup Finals, and I learned from it, and it, it helped me win a Stanley Cup. Um, so I'll share a story with them, like from experience, what that helped them. I don't think if you're a guy that gets nine hours sleep or eight and a half hours. All of a sudden, the, the stakes rise. Oh, I better get my. I better get ten hours in. If I don't get ten hours in, you know, I'm going to play. You, you can't think that way. You know, if you go to your guy that goes to dinner at night, go to dinner at night. You know, whatever you do, don't change. I think that's really the. I think from experience that helps. Like you were saying, how do you use your personal experience to get the team ready? Yeah, I I, I I think with Adam Foot being around, Sergey Gonchar, the Twins, you know, we have a lot of experience. I think grabbing guys, or you know, we have meetings. Even sitting down at lunch with a guy and telling your stories that way. I, I'm not sure if I'm a big storyteller with a group all the time. Mm -hmm. I, I don't mind it, but I think I think personal stories one-on-one um, -on -one or with a couple of guys are, are more meaningful, I think. I'm not focused on Edmonton. You guys are the worst. The worst. One question. I have a hat trick? Second. A hat trick is hat trick. No hat trick is not a problem for me. <laughs> Oh, I think you don't have to spit all <laughs> Generational talent. Thanks for liking the video and subscribing.